2013 was a bit of a different year compared to the seasons that we'd had previously with regard to rusts of wheat. What we'd seen during 2011-2012 is that rust was um, a major issue for wheat farmers, but going into 2013 we saw a lot less rust pressure, and that was really to do with the drier uh, summer and autumn conditions that we had, which reduced the carryover of inoculum. Uh, at the moment we're at the start of February 2014 and the way the conditions are at the moment we wouldn't see rust being much different uh, during 2014 to what it was during 2013. We had low rust levels in the crop at the end of the season and then we've gone into quite a dry summer you know, up until where we are now. So at the moment we'd be expecting rust levels to be low. Now that doesn't mean that people should ignore rust, you know, particularly stripe rust in wheat. They still need to work out how they're going to manage rust, but they can adjust their plans in light of the fact that the disease is likely to occur a bit later than it has in other years and, and the pressure will be a bit less. The varieties that we're particularly concerned about is the more susceptible and very susceptible varieties. That's important that people who are growing those varieties even though rust pressure will be lower, they still need to have a plan of how they're going to manage it. And in those most susceptible varieties that they're very proactive in their management, even if rust hasn't been found, they still need to be uh, proactive in the application of fungicides. So the, the main control strategy for rust, the first thing that people really need to think about is their variety selection. And it's important that in starting that process that people consult a current serial disease guide. And the Victorian one has just been published this week. So there are changes that happen to disease ratings from one year to the next, so having a current guide is really important. And for disease management, it's important that where possible to select or avoid varieties that are susceptible and very susceptible. So if we can avoid those varieties, that's the first step in getting good disease management. Now where varieties do have susceptibility to a disease, it's working out where those varieties fit in a rotation. Now when we're looking at, uh, yeah, particularly for stubble-borne diseases, that the more susceptible varieties shouldn't go into, ver into paddocks that have infection there, yeah, infected stubble. And, and then it's having a plan around where fungicides fit in the strategy. Now for most diseases, if a fungicide is going to be used, it's very important that crops are monitored so that the first signs of infection can be identified in that paddock so that when that disease starts to appear that a timely fungicide can be applied, particularly for diseases that are occurring early in the season.